Welcome to Can I Park Here, brought to you by findafashiontruck.com. Nashe and Estrell's mission is to inspire future and existing small business owners. They don't claim to be experts. They're simply trying to figure this all out, just like you. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Can I Park Here? I'm your co-host, Nashe Snow, and I'm here with... Estrell Riles. So today... We have Lauren Wilson and Tracy Beal from Media Star Promotions, and they are located in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, Media Star Promotions, they're a strategic marketing company. I want to say it's been around for about 20 years. Yeah. You know, both Lauren and Tracy, they dabble in different aspects of the business, including branding, social media marketing, event planning. They kind of do it all. Yeah. And it's so great because under Media Star Promotions, you have Boulevard of Chic, which is a fashion truck event uh, that happens every year in Baltimore. And they have multiple events during the summer. And they operate Side Dish, which is a mobile boutique. They have really good advice when it comes to planning events, when it comes to managing your fashion truck. And then Media Star Promotion also has a design company that's linked with them. So they have some great tips on just branding yourself. So this episode is full of good stuff. So get out your pen and paper. All right, here we go. Here we go. We have here today, Lauren Wilson and Tracy Beal from Media Star Promotion. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. We're sure we're going to have lots of goodies in this interview today. Let's start off having you ladies just tell a little bit about yourself. We can start with you, Lauren. Sure. So my name is Lauren Wilson and I work for Media Star Promotions now for going on three years. I have a heavy background in retail management, um, retail buying and you know marketing and promotions. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm Tracy Beal, and um, let's see, I've been with Media Star this time for about five years. Good stuff. I am a the director of social media um, strategy, and then I also uh, I have kind of like a dual role as a new business development as well. I'm a jewelry designer when I'm not at work, and sometimes when I am as well. And um, that's part of how I, I play a role with Boulevard of Chic, too, is with between being a jewelry designer and then also with social media. So we have a good time over here. Oh, neat. <laughs> What's your, your website? Uh, TracyBeal.com. So okay. T-R-A-C-E-Y-B-E-A-L-E.com. Okay. Awesome. We'll make sure to include that in the show notes for, for all those folks looking to uh, purchase jewelry. You know, quick plug. <laughs> I'm sure it's beautiful. Can't wait to check it out. I'm um, looking at it right now. And <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> I love She it. will be spending some money. She loves spending yes. money. Yeah, Tracy is one of our vendors at our kickoff May 30th. So you definitely have to look out for her booth. At BOC. So uh, can you guys tell us a little bit about just Media Star Promotion, you know, what the company is all about and some of the events that you all produce or cover? Uh, to, to say it quick, we do so much here. But to say it plainly, one of the things I always tell people is that um, we position businesses and brands to sell more, whether it's products or services whatever it is that you do. We're a strategic marketing company. We've been around for over 27 years, work with Fortune 500 clients, as well as like uh, startups and small businesses as well. So it kind of just depends on the, the business that we're working with at the time. We, we have a design company as well as a lighting and video company. So we're pretty much a one-stop shop, you know? So even mm -hmm. if you're just starting off and you're like, hey, I need everything from a logo to a website to, I, I just need to know what direction to go with my brand, social media, all of that. That is essentially what we do. And a, a big part of Media Star Promotions is um, event marketing. We do a lot of event marketing, experiential marketing. So, and experiential can sometimes be confusing to people. What that means is that imagine one of your favorite brands or imagine your own brand, um, so to speak. And imagine if we were to take a space or a room or a, a hall, wherever it is, take a space and create a brand experience just around your brand. So it's like walking into 
your brand. You know what I mean? So everything that has to do with that event, we create it, we build it, videos, everything. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good explanation. It's, I try to do it quickly. I don't know if that's a good one, but. No, I think it's great. Well, then how did you guys get into Boulevard of Chic? Can you all tell us why Media Star Promotions decided to start it up and how long um, has the event going on and any other details you want to share uh, with the audience? Sure. So um, the reason that we get to do Boulevard of Chic is because our CEO, Karen Lazarus, is awesome. Um, <laughs> how it um, how it kind of started is through almost like a joke in a meeting. Tracy and I had been um, selling, helping Karen um, sell off some of her grandmother's vintage pieces. And kind of as a joke in, in a larger meeting, Karen mentioned we should just throw her grandmother's jewelry on this truck that we have and drive around Baltimore. And I kind of said, well, that's not a bad idea. Six months later, we birthed Side Dish, which was uh, Baltimore's first accessory only mobile jewelry boutique. Being new mm-hmm. to the mobile retail business myself, it was you know kind of hard to find parking for places You know, with all the legislation that's going on in different cities. There really aren't that many places to park mobile boutiques. So I thought if I'm having this trouble with side dish, I'm sure there are other people that are having this problem. You can go to other events, you can go to like a seafood festival and it's great, you know, yes, you can sell there, but mostly people are thinking about drinking and eating some crabs. Um, so mm-hmm. I wanted to do something that was really for these fashion trucks and also other local artists or entrepreneurs that might not have a brick and mortar or a, a space all the time to sell their products and kind of make this big giant fashion party. So out of all of that, Boulevard Chic was was born. We did um, three events last year. The first one we did in April, um, we turned an old vacant lot on Key Highway in Baltimore um, that was just used for parking randomly. We turned that into the first Boulevard of Chic. Um, we did so well, we expanded onto um, Rashfield, which is in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Um, that one was mm-hmm. in August. And then um, after that, we decided to wrap up the year with a um, kind of like a holiday shopping event in November um, in Pierce's Park, which is also in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. We just decided, you know what, this is working good. Our vendors are having a good time. Our guests love it. Let's do five more this year. Wow. Go you guys. Yeah, I know. Um, the one that I went to, I think it was tied to, it was also tied to another event that was going on with pop-up shops. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful day. It was really cool to see all you guys out there. So yeah, if it's successful, why not keep doing it, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's our event. So we, you know, we invite the trucks in and there's only so many fashion trucks in the Baltimore, Virginia, DC area. So in order to give our, you know, customers or guests the best feel we decide to do pop-up shops as well so someone like tracy who has some really beautiful pieces and doesn't always get to have them in front of an audience this gives her a day to set up her own little pop-up shop and have the guests come through for her too now do you charge vendor fees for the trucks and the artists we do, um, and that covers the cost. You know, we do all the promotion for the event. We also, um, you know, the places that we, the locations we secure are not free. Okay. <laughs> so we need to, you know, make sure to cover the cost of that. And, you know, we always want to have them in locations that are these great locations, like, the, you know, the places in the Inner Harbor. Um, we have some really great locations this year around about the Inner Harbor, you know, so it, it goes to that. And then we also, we make sure that all of our events, whether it's the Boulevard of Chic event or any other event that Media Star Promotions is um, producing, we make sure that they're safe for everybody involved from our crew, our staff, vendors, you know, anybody that comes to the event. So we, um, we have to have an insurance. So part of the vendor fee goes towards the insurance and the um, location fees. So we do charge that, but we don't charge our patrons to come um, because we want people to come and spend money. So we don't want to charge the fee to get into an event and then to shop. Mm -hmm. Now, do they usually last just uh, uh, maybe five to six hours or do you have like a weekend event where it's two days? No, we have a one day. Um, All the events we found the best time that works um, is from 11 in the morning to four in the evening. The difference with our events is we have close to 2,500 people come through, but they're never there at one time. You know, think it's an outdoor shopping mall. So usually guests come through, they hit up all the vendors, they do their shopping, and then they go. They're not really hanging out for the whole duration of the event. 
um, which is good because you get a fresh new set of customers, you know, every cycle through of the event. Now, when you guys just curious, um, uh, aren't, you know, working an event like for side dish or for your jewelry business, do you all have like certain, um, tactics to working with other businesses uh, so you can, you know, park maybe in their parking lot, you know, for a weekend without having to deal with permits and so forth for the city or, you know, collaborating um, with other Baltimore craft fairs so you could do like a pop-up shop of your jewelry. Just kind of curious um, how you guys network with the people in Baltimore to, you know, to sell either out of the truck or a pop-up shop. Um, it's a little bit harder sometimes with, you know, taking side dish because it's just, I'm open to networking and and doing that. And if it works for you, it works for me, maybe pulling up with a shoe store stuff, but I haven't really run into that too much. A lot of people are not really into that. (laughs) That's the reason that we do Boulevard Chic. So we, you know, I I say it's open to everybody, you know, um, we do after a while cap, you know, I don't want to have 47 jewelry people because it's not fair to the, you know, someone like Tracy and then it's, you know, kind of gets boring for our guests. So I do limit the things. There'll be Mm -hmm. five different jewelry designers. I won't have anybody, you know, Tracy was the first one to sign up for the May 30th. So I won't have anybody else that does jewelry pieces like her. So we kind of keep it um, open because we've had a a hard time kind of partnering with other businesses. And it's, it's more so um, parking in Baltimore city. There's just not a ton of parking, Yeah, you know, um, and we're not as much of a walking city as places like DC or Mm. Manhattan. I I love Baltimore. I'm I'm a native from, um, from New Jersey and what I've been here for eight years and I, I absolutely love it. It's just, it's a different city than any city I've ever kind of been in, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Baltimore is, it's a small, it's, it's, I was going to say it's a small, big city, but there's, it's a small city and a lot mm-hmm. of people know one another. So I think the thing with, with Baltimore is that it's based a lot on relationships. It's based a lot on the people that you know. And it's not, it's not to say, you know, it's all about who you know or that it's cliquish or it, I'm not saying that in a negative um, way at all, but relationships that you have with people just make all the difference here, you know, because it is a, a small city. I know Lauren hit on uh, permits and things like that at one point. That's a whole other deal. You're dealing with like the government mm-hmm. and the, the city and all that sort of stuff. But you've done well with mm-hmm. the bars and stuff. Yeah, bars we, we partner with some bars, bars, you know, because it's a it's a non compete. So we'll do things where we take the truck and it'll be like a girls' night out. We do oh, things right. sometimes. We've gone to colleges. We'll go to your house if you want us to come up for your <laughs> bridal shower, you know, girls' night out, yeah. um, whatnot. We've done some stuff in the office too. So we, we do have some partnerships, but I think that's why, you know, I, I'm so, I, you know, kind of I'm so passionate about Boulevard de Chic is because, you know, I want to give the opportunities to other people that may not even know, hey, I can maybe go do a pop up shop somewhere. You know, because a lot, a lot of these vendors that I'm, I'm working with, and, and I reach out to them, you know, I go on, on Instagram and I'll, I'll search for these vendors and kind of network with them and see if it's something they'd be interested in. And a lot of them um, didn't know that things like this exist or don't know mm-hmm. that they can take their, because they're, they're brand new to this. And I think this is a really good um, event for them to first kind of experience, because we, we do a lot for them. You know, we give them their tent, we give them their table, we give them their mm-hmm. chairs. Um, we have you know, access to a whole design studio. So if that's something they need, they can partner with our design studio and and create banners or business cards or, um, you know, quite a few of our um, vendors from the last year did that. They, you know, they have banners and stuff and pop up banners and business cards. And now they can use that for any event, not just a Boulevard of Chic event. That's theirs that they can kind of, you know, have. We do all the promotion. Um, Tracy and her team work really hard on doing social media promotions. Um, so we, we give them a lot. Um, you know, and I, I personally walk around, people think I'm nuts. I had a, a cracked ankle <laughs> the one in the summer and I was up and down running the length of a football field. <laughs> oh, wow. Vendors making sure, you know, if someone had to use the bathroom, I would watch their booth or if they needed a bottle of water. Um, you know, we're really good with our vendors, but that's why I'm so passionate about this. And they want them to have a good experience because I'm very fortunate to be able to run side dish through this company. And I wanted to extend that fortune to other people. If that makes, yeah. if that makes sense. Them- 
Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Following a lot of the fashion trucks throughout the U.S., I see more of a trend of like getting together as a group and figuring out how to have these big fashion truck events instead of being like this lone soldier, you know, going around and seeing if you could, you know, find a place or having to deal with the government, like you mentioned earlier. Um, so I think it, it seems like a smart way to go about business because you know that you're going to have a guaranteed crowd you guys are there to help them out too. So it's it's more of like a community instead yeah. of going at it by yourself or alone. Definitely. Yeah. And Tracy and I just, we were really fortunate to partner with one of um, the other fashion trucks. Uh, her name is Laura Green. She um, she owns Go Gorgeous. And um, she works for the Baltimore Leadership Academy, which is a um, all women um, school for girls, uh, grades six through, um, seniors in high school, and it really empowers them. It's, um, you know, turns them into leaders. So we were very fortunate to speak at their career day. And, uh, that was something that we kept touching on that there's oh, room, great. there's room for everybody, you know, oh, even awesome. if you're, you know, three jewelry designers, like instead of, you know, we're really trying to push that instead of competing, like there's room for, you know, if there's another jewelry truck that wants to pull up at, at our event, I would definitely be open to that. You know, I'm not going to tell somebody, no, you know, I, I cap it at a certain thing, but I'm not going to tell you can't come to my party kind of thing, you know, like right. <laughs> there's room for everybody. And I think, especially as women in business, I think we need to a little bit more, um, help each other out and partner together instead of compete so much. No, I, I completely agree. It's funny when Astrell and I started this last summer, kind of, that was one of our main driving force forces is like, you know, really we have the ability to bring more expo- exposure to fashion trucks, which are primarily owned by women. You know, I was really impressed with that. Of course, there are some men. So <laughs> men who are listening out there, I'm not knocking you. We're here for you too. But it's primarily women. So I was like, wow, this is such a great opportunity to encourage people to go at it alone, to help them find resources, to help them network with each other. Because you're right. It's it's like we should be helping each other out instead of just trying to do our own thing. Definitely. It's, it's like um, not safety in numbers, but like there's power in numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to kind of touch on side dish a little bit more. Do you mind sharing the um, the story behind that and how it got started and maybe what the initial startup costs were? Because there are so many people out there that want to get into the mobile boutique business. And I think it would be beneficial to for them to hear like what the average costs are to start that type of business and the any hurdles that you overcame and you know whatever you have to contribute. So um, I'm very fortunate and and you know kind of going back to Boulevard Chic that's why um, we created it because of my you know being fortunate to work for this company and have an, an awesome idea that my CEO Karen you know, just said, run with it. Um, so we had the, um, trailer side dish is a, um, is a trailer pulled by an F-150 truck. And we were fortunate that we had it. Um, it was an asset that we had that was kind of just hanging out in our warehouse, not really doing anything, but it was already custom built by media star promotions to be a retail trailer going back to the, the meeting we had. And it was kind of a goof, like just throw my grandma's vintage jewelry in there and, and drive it around. After a while, the vintage pieces would run out once we sold them all. So I thought, um, why don't we do costume pieces? And, you know, being a retail buyer for years, I had some connections with some great boutiques and, and sources, you know, all over the U.S. And I wanted to do, you know, I'm a shopper. I wanted to do pieces that were under a $25 price point. Trends ch- uh, change so much. And, you know, the, the average shopper in Baltimore is a the girl we're going for is in her, you know, 20s to 30s starting out her career. Doesn't really have $40 to spend on a statement necklace when you're going to wear it like three times. We um, were fortunate to, like I said, have the trailer already kind of built to that. We had to do some alterations, you know, to change it into the boutique it is, you know, adding things like curtains. And we had to come up with um, some way to hang the jewelry. So uh, one of the one of the guys in the warehouse, um, Phil, came up with pegboards. Um, so they custom made me some really great framed out pegboards so I could put some pegs in there and, and hang the jewelry and do all that. And as much experience as I have in retail and managing, it was a lot of lessons learned. (laughs) Um, You know, some mobile boutiques, for instance, that may sell clothing, they can drive with their merchandise all set up. If a shirt falls on the floor, you pick it up, shake it off, it's not damaged. 
or with jewelry, you cannot drive. Believe me, we've tried. <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot drive with the jewelry set up because it'll get damaged. So every single day that we go out, it's a full, we've got it down to in a rush job. If I have to set it up in 45 minutes, I can, I, I think it looks like not so great, um, <laughs> but to actually properly set it up, it can take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Oh, um, wow. To pull out all the pieces, you know, we can fit over 2,500 pieces of jewelry inside of side dish. So, um, we have that. And then we also support local designers on there. So sometimes Tracy will have a corner in side dish where she'll be able to display some of her pieces. Um, we have another gal in the office, Alyssa Liberto that does ability by Alyssa. So we'll display her pieces as well. And then the vintage. So part of my job as media star promotions is to help other people that are looking to get into, um, the mobile retail business, um, because of all my experience and what I've learned and and my relationship that I now have with, um, Baltimore city permitting department. They're like my best friends. (laughs) I'm able to guide people through Mm -hmm. that process because it's, it wasn't easy. Um, like I said, it was a lot of learning and, and whatnot, um, to kind of get side dish to where it is. Um, now, and you know, it wasn't easy, but it was really worth it. I mean, in less than a, a year, um, yeah. Baltimore Magazine selected us as the best accessories in Baltimore City. So mm-hmm. really, yeah. proud, really proud of that. Yeah, and, and to the audience, if you're in the area, I definitely recommend checking it out because I stepped into it and I was like, this is cool. I mean, from like the branding um, to just like the pegboards, like everything about it is says chic and fun. So I could see how you could get so much exposure in a very short period of time because it's, it's just, it looks cool. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much. And you know, Side Dish is a perfect example of what Media Star represents. And, and that was part of my my reason behind having it to have this awesome kind of marketing tool to be like, look, look what Media Star can do. I mean, everything from the actual trailer itself was designed by Media Star. The logoing, you know, I, I we have a fabulous design team. You know, when I kind of came up with the concept, my logo was like a Chevron circle with the name Side Dish in it. And <laughs> they took that and they, you know see the logo it's awesome it's an actual like dish with a lid that you pull off and the the handle on the lid is a diamond and there's a pearl necklace around the base of the you know the the serving tray it's just you know and the cursive writing it's just so they did all that you know we've produced everything from the logo to the video that reel that runs inside to you know you name it it's done yeah so no, it's really, really cool. And I'm just curious, you know, because now we've heard the kind of the fashion truck side of it. When when coming to or when putting together an event, do you have any advice for fashion trucks in other states, like things that they should keep in mind um, if they want to do a Boulevard of Chic type of event? Sure. I mean, in details. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in details. And, All the um, details. You know, I, Boulevard of Chic, even though, Boulevard of Chic and Side Dish are part of, a, you know, Media Star. They're two separate entities. I even, money comes out of my budget for the year to go to my own event. Um, mm. So I keep them, you know, very separate. So, you know, my advice is, you know, really check out the event. Um, you know, talk to the event producer. Um, email them. You know, I, I'm very open with um, as much information as I can give people that are curious about going to Boulevard of Chic. You know, um, ask the attendants. Um, try one out. You know, we have several that you can sign up. But what I tell people is if you're not sure and you've not something you've done, come to one of them. If you weren't happy, then then you weren't happy. And, and let me know what we can maybe to do to make it better. But you also have to kind of be a hustler in, in this you know, game. So you can pull two fashion trucks up and they can have the same exact pieces. If you walk into one and, you know, the, the person on there is bright and cheery and, and talking to you and, and assisting you and helping you out, they're going to make a ton of money. If you go into the other one and they're kind of just hanging out and just not really being, a, you know, like a hustler, then they're not, they're not going to do as well. I mean, any, you know, I, I recommend that to all of my, um, my vendors, you know, you're going to get out of the event, what you also put into it. And I've seen it, you know, I have some vendors that, and we'll give you all the tools, you know, we'll send you hard copies of flyers that you can give out to your customers or anyone you meet. We send you electronic things to post on your social media. So, you know, I've noticed the ones that have a great time at Boulevard of Chic are really interactive with their customers, have helped promote it, have talked up the event, as opposed to the ones that are kind of iffy on it, that really didn't do as much. So, you mm-hmm. know, 
you have to put a little bit of effort. And I think that's anything in life. You have to kind of put, you know, what you put into something is what you're going to get out of it. Um, so my advice would be, you know, put in what you want to get out and, you know, just kind of explore your options and look into, you know, look into different events and, you know, also take, take the consideration that, you know, um, see what you're getting for your money. I, I get people that sometimes say that we, you know, they're not thrilled with our, our vendor fee, but I could charge you $30, but we could be in a parking lot at like super fresh <laughs> and not, right. and I, I have a social media team that runs contests promoting, you know, your brands, um, or that brings the crowd in or that, you know, we're, we're partnering with some really big partners this year. We've partnered with CBS radio, who's going to be broadcasting live at, at the first event, you know, so that's what all that money kind of goes to. So yes, we could do things at a cheaper price, but you're not going to, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Yeah. But you know, it's so funny. Um, Estrell brought this up the other day because, uh, she does like home decor stuff, um, on EstrellRouse.com. And I do some like wood laser cutter cutting that I sell on creativeroute.com. But when we try to go to different places, like, you know, the big fairs, renegade fair, you know, all those other big fairs, the vendor fees are huge because so much work goes into them. They have so much media exposure. And I think some of the fashion truck events actually are a lot cheaper than those craft fair events. I think people might just not realize like sure. all the hard work and effort that goes into it. And you're right. Like if, if your, your vendor fee is like $10, you're probably in a parking lot behind a building <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and no one knows about it. No, more like <laughs> in just an alley. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I always joke, you know, I, I don't sleep like starting last week till, you know, the week after our last event in December, Lauren doesn't sleep. I'm up and you can ask, you know, I'll send emails through and people are like, what are you doing up at four o'clock in the morning? I'm like, Oh, I'm on Instagram promoting BLC. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't sleep. I, I live, breathe and, and, you know, and eat this event because I want it to be successful. You know, I want everyone to have a good time and I, I kind of go a little bit insane sometimes. <laughs> it's, right. it's, you know, everyone else is like, Oh, it's, it's Boulevard of Chic mode. Lauren's going to be a little crabby, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know we do we put a lot of a lot of hard work you know into it and tracy and her team are doing a fantastic job this year um they really took us on almost as a client um and they're they came up with some awesome ideas that i would have never been able to think of and are really running with the social media you know so tracy can kind of talk on yeah because that was definitely my my next question like for tracy um i wanted to dive into social media because i think for fashion trucks you know even brick and mortar shops anyone who has a business, that's the trickiest thing, right? Because there's like four or five different types of social media you could take advantage of. And each one has its own little, you know, tricks in order to get more followers and get people to interact with your posts. So do you have any tips or what has worked for Boulevard is Chic? Anything that you could share to help out other fashion truck owners or business owners? I think a tip across the board is first, don't just jump into everything. I think people feel like they have to sign up for every platform that they, there is, you know, like you mm -hmm. have to take into account the time, the kind of time that you have, number one. And um, if it's just you, like if you're the only person that's going to be posting on these sites and if there's a learning curve for yourself, like, hey, I'm not really a social media type person. This isn't really my thing. Then pick like one or two platforms that work for you. You know what I mean? Like if 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 you do really well, especially with fashion trucks, you can you can get away with like Instagram and Facebook or just Instagram a lot of times. You know what I mean? Because of, you know, what you're selling. But mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is to not overwhelm yourself and try to sign up on every single platform there is just because, and then you end up on four different platforms and all four of them are kind of less than half done, you know? Right. That's one of the, the main things. Um, another thing is just to, to understand who your audience is and to also understand who you are as a brand and as a company. I, I like to approach social media, especially when it comes to, to companies um, as like personifying a brand, like pretending that the brand is actually a person, 
you know, mm-hmm. and kind of working my way down from there. And then we get into like, who's your audience? What's your voice? And, you know, all that sort of stuff. But if you think about it as a person, and sometimes that person might even be you, you know, like if, if your fashion truck, mm-hmm. you know, reflects you and your style and your thing, you know, and your customers tend to, to look like you and be within your same demographic and age bracket, then you probably are that persona and you can, you know, build your strategy from there. But, um, yeah, it's just balancing out your time, understanding who you're talking to, knowing your brand and, mm-hmm. and having a plan, having some sort of a strategy. People forget about that, too. It, it, social media is, is easy to, to jump into, you know, because it's so available. You know, everything's right. so easy. I can just I can sign up for 10 Instagram accounts right now, but it doesn't mean all 10 of them are going to be rocking. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's just it's so available, but the availability doesn't necessarily equate to um, the amount of time that it takes and the amount of effort like any other marketing. It, it takes a plan. Which social media platform platforms work best for media star and then which work best for side dish? I guess for us, LinkedIn is a great place really? because I'm for media star promotions. We're a marketing company. Oh, that's true. That makes sense. That's yeah. companies okay. as well. So we're, we're, we're B2B basically business to business. Um, now, when you think about something like side dish or you think about Boulevard of Chic, where in, in, in some ways Boulevard of Chic is, is B2B, but it, when it comes down to it, the actual event is the B2C, like, you know, business to customer. So we're looking at the masses there. So we're looking at like your Facebook, um, your Instagram, that sort of thing for um, side dish and Boulevard of Chic. I think Instagram is, is a really hot platform for those two. And sometimes I just tell people, like, if you're not sure where to go go to Facebook. If you know you're not B2B, go to Facebook because that's where most people are. So you can kind of get your legs there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just, it sort of depends. But with dealing with fashion and that sort of thing, yeah, I'd say Facebook and Instagram because you can post those pictures. You know, it's very visual. Have you ever done um, live broadcasting on Twitter for the um, Boulevard of Sheep events? That's something that we're we're looking at um, adding this year for Twitter as well as uh, Instagram. Yeah, I mean, I think that is like I think that's going to take off. Like that's <laughs> my money is on live broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> like we just did an article on it, and Twitter just bought Periscope, or I think that's the name of it. I'll include yeah. it in this the show notes. And I'm yeah. like, for Twitter to invest like a million, two million, whatever it was, dollars into this, they they have a feeling it's going to take off too. So I'm going to go with the money, <laughs> and you know, try to use it and get, see you know see what how it works out if it. It's, it's able to even expose our business to more people. So I'm kind of excited to see what people do yeah. with it. It's definitely worth a try. I, I, like video is another big thing, you know, video and definitely anything live. Like people are moving faster. The world is moving faster. And a lot of it has to do with technology and social media. Everything's right now or yesterday, you know. So it's everything moves so quickly. So the, the more impact that you can have in the least amount of time, then you, that's, you're gonna win. Instagram, I know it's like huge, but I resisted Instagram, and <laughs> it's because I am a Pinterest junkie, and so I'm like, why do I'm like, why do we have to go on Instagram and uh, <laughs> and and uh, I was like, no, that's where everybody is. I mean, Pinterest, Pinterest is good too, and it's it's funny. I I run a tall blog, so for just blogs. Pinterest actually the past six months has increased my traffic like 400%. Okay. It's crazy because it's like as soon as you get four or five things to take off, then you're golden. Um, but Astro is like, no, but everybody's on Instagram. We have to do it. So I'm, I'm finally getting with Instagram. I think that the- and Twitter sucks. Yeah. Oh. No, Twitter is good. You uh, I refuse. I do not want to be involved with anything <laughs> Twitter related. <laughs> I, I can't do it. <laughs> you know why I think Instagram works so easy? Because you can just do a picture and you have to do, you don't have to do words. You can just do a picture and it's something really captivating and it's quick. Like Tracy said, I mean, everyone's mm-hmm. attention span is like, go, go, go. I mean, we were just sitting here talking about it when we were waiting to connect with you. We were like, we should be doing something. We can't sit here still. <laughs> no, right, right. <laughs> we're waiting all you know, time. I, we have 10 minutes. 
you know, and, and that's how I think that's how it is. So, you know, I connect a lot with Instagram, you know, when I'm looking for new and fresh vendors, I can go on Instagram and, you know, search something like Baltimore entrepreneur or Baltimore style. And I get at my fingertips, hundreds of people that have these great brands. And I can see and be like, you know what? I like their stuff. I'm going to see if they want to come do our thing. You know, where else can you do that? But mm-hmm. someone like an Instagram. That's true. I think the thing that killed me is like you couldn't put links under the photos. It's like link in profile. But, you know, you're right um, because I was contacted um, for some of my work by a store in Chicago and they just yeah. left a message on one of my pictures and I responded back and I'm like, hey, if you guys are looking for vendors, let me know. And she's like, oh, yeah, here's my email address. And I'm like, oh, wait. I sell Maybe. all the time on Instagram. Yeah. So many people sell all the time on Instagram. Like it, it's a it's a very good sales tool. Very good. I think Pinterest can work in a similar way. It's just more or less people saving things that they want to purchase later. I think, right. or like they, they're putting it in their little basket and still walking around the store. That's uh-huh. that's really what it is. You know what I mean? Like put it in the basket and they walk around the store. Instagram more is more kind of like a wish list. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little more immediate on Instagram because it's just like you heart it, you like it, you say something about it, and then at, you feel like in that moment you gotta do what it takes to get it, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas Pinterest, you're you're kind of you're putting it off on the side. You will come back to it because you're saving it, you know, in your basket. Well, one of you <laughs> likes Twitter because you just favorited my tweets. So. <laughs> no, I it wasn't I me. Am- I am, yeah, I have like my me. phone next to me and I was like, oh, something just popped up. I'm like, oh, they just tweeted, retweet. I am the Twitter junkie. My phone is connected from, for like I said, from last week to the week after December 12th, my phone is going to be like on my pillow. It's attached to me. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> Event moves I want to see the tweet. Where is it? <laughs> like, <there's a> tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's sad you know that we are work junkies because we are doing this interview and all four of us are on social media <laughs> at the same time checking stuff <laughs> that's kind of how the world is today right it's like yeah. no one just sits down and does one thing so you know when tracy brought up her website we checked it out you know i'm making sure that i have like the media star website up the side dish website up so if anything comes up i have it so it's like yeah i don't think we know how to stay still anymore <laughs> <laughs> you know a good a good one of one of our sites that i think would be good for you guys to post up to is um msp design studio i think that's going to be a lot more relatable to your audience to some of the um the uh, the things that we offer or the the capabilities we have through our design studio. Oh, oh cool. cool. Yeah, so it's it's literally mspdesignstudio.com. So that's all sorts of like yeah, every, branding um, and printing design, website design, like basically the kind of stuff that your audience would need, you know, the type of services your audience would need. Yeah, both the Boulevard of Chic um, logos, websites, all, all of their branding has been done um, in-house by our design team. No, I'm on the website now. It looks fantastic. Now, it's funny. I'm a design snob because I'm a graphic designer by trade. Like that's that's my kind of bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as soon as I went to the site, I'm like, this is pretty. Which is (laughs) which is a a drastic change because she is a snob. Every time (laughs) I say, hey, Nache, check out this website. Oh my god, this website sucks. (laughs) I'm just like, really. Wait, we've seen some, you know, this is like a PSA announcement for some fashion trucks out there. Like we've gone to some truck sites. There's no like picture of the truck, no picture of um, like any of the stuff they sell. There's no links to their social media accounts. So we're like, well, man, this the website tells me nothing about like this company and it, it, there's nothing inviting about it. And so that's why I'm I always try to remind people, like, this is who you are. Sometimes this is the first impression people get. So I think it's really important. So I'll make sure to include a link because, yeah, the website looks cool. That is. I mean, that's something yeah. to say about how talented our, our team is because I am not – I'm creative. Um, I can take a hot glue gun and some jewels and, you know, make you something. Or I can go to, like, the dollar store and, you know, furnish your whole house. But I'm not right. I'm not artistic. And I came up with this – you know, I told my design team we would have meetings and they're like, all right, what do you 
want for Boulevard Chic. I'm like, I just see a woman walking down like a boulevard of trucks. And they <laughs> take my, my crazy idea and they make it into something tangible and something way better than, you know, I'm drawing stick figures on napkins. And they take it and they make it so much more than it. So, you know, that's something that, you know, for fashion trucks out there, or any small businesses, if they have these, you know, great ideas, that's something that our design team can sit with you and really turn your idea into reality. And, you know, also, I want to, you know, ask you guys if you have any resources, um, additional resources like that to maybe just kind of send them to us in an email or keep us apprised of any, you know, new things that come about with Media Star because we, uh, you know, find a fashion truck. We are trying to be the premier resource for existing truck owners and future truck owners. So if we have the resources to share with them, you know, that's ideal. So if you guys have, you know, that type of information that you would like us to share, we'll be more than happy to do so. Thank you. Yeah, no, definitely that, you know, they can, they can get in touch with me directly. And that's something that I can point them in. You know, it's, it's not easy. And it's what people have to understand is you're building a brand and you're building a business and to do it correctly, you know, almost as we talked about with like vendor fees, you can start it up for like 500 bucks, but you're not going to, you know, you, it costs money to make money. Um, right. sometimes, you know, what people have to keep in mind is, you know, we have a little bit more challenges being fashion truck managers and owners because there is a legislation and, you know, you have to adapt things to be mobile and you might have some idea in your, your head and you have to scrap that completely and, mm-hmm. and go with something else and just be like really flexible. You know, we're here to assist people with that. And, you know, what I tell people too is take advantage of, you know, my knowledge. If I had somebody that knew exactly what they were doing and, and you know, obviously I fell back on, you know, I have over 20 years in, in retail experience. And if I had somebody that could have given me step-by-step step, do A, B, C, D, I would have given them money for it, you know, in, mm-hmm. in a heartbeat. Um, I would have just said, here, here you go. Uh, let's make this work. Um, you know, it takes three years for any business, whether it's mobile retail, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a clothing store to really see your fruition and, and all the work and stuff you put into it. So, you know, if after the first six months, it looks like you're failing. Just keep plugging through. It doesn't happen overnight. Well, we're coming towards the end of uh, the interview, and we have what we call rapid ra- a rapid round. That sounds like weird. We might have to change the name of that. But <laughs> but basically, we have three questions that you answer quickly. I'll just throw it out there, and then if each one of you guys could just let us know what the first thing is that comes, you know, in mind. Oh lord. <laughs> ah! I'm, such, I'm such a thinker. That's why I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. So for the first question, do you have a favorite podcast or blog? And if so, what is it? Okay. I'm going to be a dork. And um, I liked it. I liked the, it's not on anymore. Not live, but I really enjoyed Serial. Which was, oh, yes. the, you know what? I just started that today. Nashe told me about it. But I have to say, I fell asleep on the oh. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> no, it is so you good. Have to, you have to clean your house to it. because. <laughs> and I'm just like, when I downloaded it, I'm like, oh, it's almost an hour. Oh, my God. I don't have time for this crap. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, you you are you are so right. Like because it was uh, exactly because I was cleaning a house and someone told me about it. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll just put it on speakerphone. I finished it in like two and a half days. Yeah, all twelve I did episodes. Because I was just oh, ooh, and you get so sucked in and you want to know what's happening. So yeah, I'm really sucked in. So that was my favorite. No, for no, me, no. as far as podcasts are concerned, or even blogs, oh God, I'm, I'm always in like social media or marketing land. So <laughs> I like social media examiner a lot. And then I'm a YouTube girl. So I'm always on YouTube looking for something, looking for like, whether it's like jewelry making tutorials most of the time, or just looking for different like video blogs, even just to see how people shoot them and, and you know, that sort of thing. We'll, we'll um, um, add up of 
the links, well, yeah, everybody has YouTube, but <laughs> we'll ha- add the social examiner because I've never heard of that. But like you, I'm always interested in anything related to business, social media, you name it. Okay, next question. This is an easy one. What do you like to do in your free time to wind down and or just de-stress after you come home from work? <laughs> what is that? No. <laughs> Everybody and, and the answer that. can't be um, more work. <laughs> I, I binge watch like so I binge watch um series that, you know, like right now I'm obsessively watching Pretty Little Liars from the beginning. So I, I like can't wait to get home. I'm such a dork. I like work all day and I can't wait to get home. I put sweatpants on and like I rush home like there's something to do and I go home and I put sweatpants on and I eat cereal in bed and watch Pretty Little Liars till like four o'clock in the morning as I'm on Instagram. What season are you on? I'm on season two now. Okay. Cause I I watch it, but it's like it's getting to the point now. I was like, okay, who's A? Who's A? I, I can't wait. I need to know now. <laughs> I know it's driving me crazy. I'm like, oh, I got all these seasons to go. But that's probably what I'll do all weekend. Is like in bed, sweatpants, pretty little liars on the iPad, and then Instagramming for BOC. So <laughs> now, Nisha, I'm pretty sure you're wondering, like, what is this show we're talking about? I know it's what it is. Awesome. It's too soap <laughs> opera for me. It's like, but you know what. Let me it's let like, me tell you guys, <laughs> okay. Nache, what she does is she always tells me like she's a snob and she always tells me, <laughs> oh, I don't have time for that. That show seems like it's stupid, but she'll secretly DVR it and watch it <laughs> without telling me. <laughs> I'm like a 12 year old at heart. Like if I can still play with my Barbie dolls, I would. So anything that's like tween age, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Tracy? Uh, okay, well, when I'm not making jewelry, because jewelry is one of my things, and it, it does de-stress me, actually, because I get to use hammer and fire. So if I'm angry, I can let it out. Um, I like photography, too. So I do. I take a lot of pictures, even just when I'm out with, like, family or friends. Like, I'm the person taking pictures of the street or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, candid pictures of people in the room. And just, you know, spending time with my friends and, and family. Like, I love I love conversation. Like, even what we're doing right now, even though I can't see your face for real. Right. Just, the, <laughs> just the exchange of ideas and getting together with, with people that are either similar to myself or very different is even better. You know, and the exchange of ideas. So that's a lot of what I do. Like, just hanging out with friends and family and normally trying to create something, some kind of way. Like, I'm just, I'm a a creative person and my mind's always going. So I need to create something all the time. No. And I think that gets people off of the computer too, like photography, jewelry, making anything, you know, craft related, but, but those type of activities forces us to put down like our phones and step away from the computers and computer and do something different. I'm all for that because I feel like we're like a slave to our devices. Oh, I definitely am. <laughs> I definitely am. But you know, it's funny, like when I make jewelry, I'm either watching Law and Order or I'm, <laughs> I'll watch Law and Order or I'll watch something on Netflix, you know, because I like for something to just kind of go. I don't really like the TV so much. And sometimes I'll, I'll listen to music. It depends. I'll listen to music if someone else is there so I can chit chat with them. Yeah, I like people and, and things happening, you know. OK, so one more for the rapid round and then we'll just have the final question um, to wrap everything up for both of you guys. Android or iPhone? And what is your favorite app? Oh, man. OK, so <laughs> Oppo and I still have an iPhone, like personally, like my Lauren Wilson number is a iPhone 4 and I refuse to buy an iPhone 6 because back in the day company for 20 years and it was time to upgrade they would just give you the new phone <clears throat> Sprint but now they you know, pay $200 for it and I'm like I'm fine with my even though it they gets hot it. they want me to lease it or buy it out and it, it gets hot and it shuts off randomly at like 80% but I'm fine with it but my awesome company Media Star um, gave me an iPhone 6 for oh, the work purposes. So I have that thing attached to my hip. Um, <laughs> I, really, I really enjoy Apple products and my favorite app um, right now. I, I love Uber. I'm like an Uber fanatic. Like I'm like, where can I, I gotta walk up the street. Let me just get you an do. Uber. I love Uber. Uber. Well, I don't, um, I don't drive. Leave it to the girl that doesn't drive to you know, do a fashion <laughs> truck. <laughs> so, 
ironic. So Uber is my Uber, my best friend. I, I love it. It's just you pull it up. It's like, hey, I'll be there in five minutes. And I love it. So I think it's I love awesome. It. And I know this is supposed to be rapid, but wait a second. So <laughs> the <laughs> companies are actually they they're angry with Uber for what they're doing. And I think that's so funny. You know, they're angry with Uber for, you know, the business that they've built from you know, people just being able to, to ride and I guess what are they, just anybody. Like, well, it is. It's all now it's open to anyone to what's drive. What's awesome is like, you know, right. being a single girl, like if I'm leaving the bar or I'm meeting friends out at the bar in the city, I know exactly who my driver is. Yeah. I can post it out on social media so everyone knows I'm in an Uber. So God forbid, you know, they do background checks on um, these people. And so God forbid, you know, with a taxi, you don't have that kind of service. I don't know who's coming to get me when they're coming. You know, sometimes I've waited for a taxi for like 45 minutes and I'm like, what? But with Uber, you see who it is, you know, their rating, you can check their rating. You can cancel the driver if you don't feel comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's genius. I never thought of it, but I love it. I forgot the question. I'm oh, into um, a- <laughs> <laughs> uh, Android. Android or iPhone? And what is your favorite app? I'm a, I'm definitely an Apple girl. I have my little iPhone. Although I am a little curious about Android. We did a, an event for them not so long ago, and uh-huh. um, so I got to kind of like mess with like Google Cardboard and all this other stuff. Like Google is one of my other favorite companies, but. Apple computers. I have their phone, and you know, once you're you're in the family, you're locked in. It's like the digital mafia. <laughs> right? Don't convert. I'm like, don't convert. It's like once you're, one, you're, you're locked down, you know. So I'm locked into Apple, and they're my friends. And as far as the app is concerned, um, Flipboard. I really like Flipboard a lot. I, that. I love Flipboard. It's a, it's a nice place to find content, just to read about different things happening in the world. And just, you know, you can set it up based on your interests. You know, it's basically like a, a, a magazine app, but it shows you the type of content that you think you might be interested in. You know, and then you can aggregate that content other places. Like, say you want to post it to your Facebook or your Twitter or or whatever the case may be. But I find out about so much, like so many really, really cool things happening in the world through Flipboard. What would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Oh, I'd be a, I'd be a, um, that's about to curse. I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead, girl, let it out. (laughs) I would, I would definitely be, um, I would be a singer or some sort of a rock star, but I would still have a, um, a jewelry design brand, a jewelry brand. That's definitely what I would do. Oh, so do you um, like sing on the side a little bit? A little bit. I'm working myself up to the point where I'm not too nervous to sing in front of people. But I've recorded some music for years now. It's crazy. You can Uh, sing our outro. (laughs) 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 Just make up something, some random, you know. (laughs) We just need something cool and awesome, right? (laughs) Record a song like, for you, and I would do voiceovers for you if you want. Funny wanted. story, it's my um, favorite. With Tracy was singing, we used to share an office, and in between our office was like this, <laughs> like an IKEA, sh- like cubbies, you know. And so I could look through the cubby and see Tracy's face, and whenever we'd have like a day where we get stressed, we just look through and we just sing like, "Hello, Tracy." <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll come in her office and still stick my head through the cubby and just sing it. Yeah, I just randomly sing. It's it's fun. But if I could get paid to just run around and stand on stage and sing songs, what? Let's, um, let's do it. What would you do, Laura? Um, I don't know if like necessarily fail, but if like almost like a money was no object and they can just do what I really want to do. Um, I always kind of had this. I guess you could say like a dream or an idea that I would love to have a um, like healthy lifestyle, kind of like a weight loss camp for kids that live in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I grew up not very wealthy and um, you know, healthy food is not, um, not that it's hard to come by, but if you don't know, if all you know is like McDonald's and Royal Farms chicken, that's all, you know, there's these like camps all over the country that kids that have money can go to. And I just think it would be so nice to do, that kind of a, an experience for a kid that wouldn't be able to, and maybe can bring, you know, the stuff they'd learn there would be how to do healthy food on a budget, you know, so they could bring that back to their family and, um, kind of do that. And, uh, I'd want to incorporate dogs in there somehow. So maybe like, they could learn responsibility <laughs> to take care of dogs, something like that. <laughs> but I just think that, you know, like a, you know, how, how awesome to, you know, 
when Tracy and I went to the girls' school, it was such a good day because we were around all these young people and it was really like energetic and it gave you a whole like when you're having a bad day and you're thinking about like adult stuff, um, you just go around kids and it just they're so full of life and you can actually learn a lot from them. So like how great would that be to be helping kids all day and just it's like your job, just hanging out mm-hmm. in the sunshine and running around with kids all day. So that that's what I would want to do. No, and it's it's interesting you brought that up because I was listening to this podcast. It's called uh, One Part Podcast, and she was interviewing a, a food justice leader. That's what uh, she called him. <laughs> it's like food justice, but food justice leader Brian Terry, and that was his whole thing. Is like he, I believe, is helping like kids and you know um, low income families figure out how to eat right, like teaching them how to, I guess, look for like local farms and where to shop, you know, just in, and how to cook and what to eat and try to stay away from like processed foods and, and why it's a benefit. And it it doesn't necessarily have to deal with, you know, weight loss, but it's just about feeling good. And either you could pay now or pay later, because if you start eating good now, then you might not be on medicine a little bit later on. So just kind of investing in yourself. So, uh, I would definitely check him out and maybe that'll inspire you to, you know, do something too or connect with him. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, well, to wrap up, this is where you can share anything like where to find you guys, uh, share any websites, social media that you think will be relevant to our audience and any events uh, coming up. But uh, whatever you guys want our audience to know about, uh, we'll, we'll end on that note. Yeah, so we definitely want to encourage anybody that is in the Baltimore, D.C., Virginia area to come on out to Boulevard of Chic. It's a really, really fun event. And like I said, it's not something you have to spend your entire day there, but you're going to want to. Um, we're introducing some new elements this year. So we'll have some like really fun, interactive things um, like a beauty bar where you can go and you know, try out maybe a new hairstyle for the day or, or learn how to put on, um, you know, the perfect false eyelashes or do that Mm -hmm. great Kendall Jenner lip that you're looking to do. Um, so there'll be stuff like that. Um, we're going to have some activities for kids. Um, so it's just like a really, really great event. Um, our first one, um, is going to be at Pierce's park and that's downtown in, um, Baltimore's inner Harbor, um, on May 30th from 11 AM to 4 PM. And you can find out more event details, um, about becoming a vendor or getting involved, um, sponsoring the event through our website, which is www.boulevardofchic.com. Um, my contact information is on there as well. So you can connect with me, you know, about Boulevard Chic, about Side Dish or, um, you know, consultating, um, consultation services with um, mobile boutiques through the Boulevard of Chic website. Great. And um, for all the listeners out there, I'm going to try to make it to that event and I'm going to use that new Periscope app and I'm going to live broadcast and make <laughs> Astra a believer in Twitter. <laughs> and show happen. off <laughs> and show off the awesome event. Tracy and Lauren, thank you for giving us an hour of your time. We really appreciate it. You've given some like awesome tips and we'll make sure to uh you know distribute your resources or have them in the show notes. But just really want to say thanks. Uh thanks for giving us your time today or tonight. <laughs> no, thank you for having yes. us. We really enjoyed it. This was awesome. Yes, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, we had so much fun with Lauren and Tracy. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, we have a lot in common as well. And I think that all of the services that they offer, you know, if as soon as they give us all of the details, I can't wait to start referring other fashion trucks to them. I thought there were a lot of good nuggets in this episode, and I really enjoyed hearing about how Tracy, like, does jewelry on the side and also how she loves photography because I really do feel that you need some other kind of hobby or activity outside of just your regular nine to five job, something that will take you away. Even if it's like Lauren and you're binge watching, you know, your favorite shows, just remember that you need to step away sometimes uh, because you don't want to get burned out. And sometimes when you're trying to start your own business, it's easy to do it. But uh, this episode, I don't know, I think it was great. It also had like very good practical business tips, like when it comes to design. So uh, I hope that you guys got a lot out of it. If you did, please comment on the post. Absolutely. And, you know, just to touch back on Media Star Promotions itself, you know, it's 
pretty much a one-stop shop for any new business. And if you're in the Baltimore area, look them up. Great place. Clearly a great place to work for, to, you know, to work at. And, you know, if you are a new business, check them out. Mm -hmm. And no, we're trying this out. So we're, we're anxious to see, uh, what people leave us. But if you go to start a fashion truck.com, click on the word podcast on that page, we have a place where you can actually submit a voicemail message from us. It's under the header, ask FFT. Um, and as long as you're if you have a microphone, so it could be done on your computer or your cell phone, you can ask, actually submit a question, which will be played on the podcast. And Estrella and I will do our best to answer whatever that question may be. So just kind of throw something at us. The only thing we ask is you keep the question under two minutes, max three, just because we'll try to keep those episodes a little bit shorter. Anywho, look forward to hearing from you. And if you happen to, um, Nishay, if you happen to get any creepy messages, it's probably me doing some texts. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay. I should have said no creepy messages. Thank you. <laughs> no <laughs> spam. That. <laughs> right. No spam. No creepy messages. Thank you. <laughs> and don't forget, guys, go to iTunes, rates, and review us and subscribe. That is important, just like the ratings. Please, yeah. please, please. And the begging is over. <laughs> All right. We will catch you next time. We have a lot of exciting podcasts coming up, episodes coming up that we really think you like. But anywho, take care and have a wonderful day. Toodles. <laughs>